his birthplace at Otamatea, the Honorable P.K. Pike here was buried in a quiet country churchyard after a week of mourning shared with Maori tribes by his fellow ministers in the war administration and by members of cabinet led by the Prime Minister. Parare Karaka Paikia was a descendant of Paikia Teheka Ua, chief of the Ngāti Whatua. Like many Māoris who gained positions of leadership in their race, he found that obligations of service to his own people involved obligations to his country. From a position of prominence in Māori affairs, he was chief executive officer of the Ratana movement, he went forward to find his place in national politics. As member for the Northern Māori electorate, he became minister in charge of the Māori war effort. When he died, he seemed only at the beginning of his political career. Yet he had already shown that a Māori's allegiance to his people and the patriotism of a New Zealander are the same thing. This Wellington schoolboy is weaving a scarf on a small hand loom. Using two colours, he's trying a simple pattern. Weaving is a particularly instructive craft, and there's no shortage of waste wool which can be spun for school use. Much has been hand spun by the children themselves. When the ends of the warp have been knotted, the girls take over to wash the scarves and give them their first ironing. Crafts have an important place in a complete education. Man used materials long before he used words and figures. He still needs to know all about them. Today, the hands as well as the heads of the younger generation are receiving training in the schools. These are men who belong in these tropical Solomon Islands. They've come to work as laborers on Guadalcanal. A bronze head that would please a sculptor and the spear of his ancestors count for little amidst a modern war. It is as laborers and bearers the Solomon Islanders are helping to defend their homeland. Here on Guadalcanal, four weeks before its fall, we see a group of British and New Zealand officers. Captain DC Trench examines a Japanese-made Luger pistol. Here's Captain Williams talking to Major Clemens, MC, in a clearing out of range of snipers. Now the Fijian scouts are presenting Carver to their New Zealand officers. First fill goes to Captain Williams. This little group here have a right to celebrate, for in their first month of scouting behind the enemy lines, they've shot or knifed nearly 30 Japs. Their own casualties were three walking wounded. In its ceremonial round, the cup next passes to Lieutenant Dudley Chambers. The beauty of Carver is that it goes to the legs, not the head. It's a great aid to brilliant conversation, so it's a good drink after working for days in Guadalcanal jungle in the completest silence. Now, while Solomon's parakeets go about their business in the palm trees overhead, the Fijian scouts are starting out on a demonstration patrol. These are men who've beaten the Japs outright in their own methods of jungle fighting. Sometimes they use the Japs' own weapons. The patrol passes and the jungle settles down. With no very obvious sign of man about, the waterboatmen skid once more over the mosquito pools. The duty of these men is to bring back information, not trophies. But they do more than their job. And enemy patrols sometimes go where the good Japs go and never know what hit them. General Rommel, in a classic attempt to make friends and influence people, once told us that a million New Zealanders could conquer the world. If we had to pull in more people to make that number, we'd gladly begin by adopting the fighting Fijians. 